Underground Reggie. DJ Rico Bank. All right, what it do? What's happening? This is your homie DJ Rico Banks. Today we got the homie Crispy Yola in the building. Crispy, talk to the people. What's up? What's up, man? It's your boy Crispy Yola up in this thing. We gonna do this interview, man. Y'all gonna see what I'm about. Shoot, check out my music. Check it on Instagram, man. Search Crispy Yola. You gonna see there's a lot of stuff there. I make my own beats, produce my own stuff. Been doing this for ten years, or actually probably longer. So. Okay. Okay, Crispy, so for the people who not up on your music, man, give them a brief introduction to who you are and how you got started. Yeah, so I started when I was in, mm, I would say probably early high school, me about ninth grade, my brother was going, and, uh, you know, I started off doing mixtapes just like everybody else, you know, off of other people's beats and stuff. Started selling those with each mixtape that I sold. I went and bought more equipment, started, you know, getting fruity loops and started getting into Pro Tools and stuff like that. Started teaching myself how to do all the stuff like that. Uh, but I always try to sit there and put myself in each song, you know, because that's, that's one thing I love about making music. You know, I can sit there and listen to these songs to see where I was at that point in life. You know, I can sit there and see, OK, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, even if it was a party song, like, OK, well, shoot, I was in a party mood at that time. You know, if it's a real song, it's like, OK, you know, I know exactly what I was going through at that time. You know, you can kind of see what you're going through just by listening to your own music sometimes when you put your soul into it. So that's, that's me, you know, I sit there, I try to put, you know, my culture into it. You know, I'm from Dallas, of course, little Cedar Hill, and I'm gonna represent that in a lot of my songs. Uh, you know, just whatever kind of mood I'm feeling that's gonna be in there. But yeah, I sit there and just try to put myself into it. Uh, but yeah, uh, in the past I've made, uh, you know, songs with uh, Big Tug years ago. I need to sit there and release that. You now I got a song with GT Garza that just released. Uh, you know, I've just been working, just but I got a few videos I haven't put out yet. Just uh, every day I'm out there grinding. I actually met you, you know, through a show. I was just going to big events, started finally passing out my cards and stuff like that because I have years, years and years worth of uh, beats and songs that I never released. You know, it's a whole different game, the marketing game. So that's where I'm at right now. Okay, so who would you, who or what would you say were some of your earlier inspirations and influences? Yeah, so I used to jam out, of course, like everybody else around here, pretty much UGK. Uh, you know, all the Scarface definitely was huge influence. You know, he puts a lot of his real stuff into his tracks. You know, you listen to his stuff and it's, you know, you can feel it, you know. Uh, you know, I look at Grill, listen to 36 Mafia too, you know, gave a certain kind of style and stuff like that. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much uh, Texas to Memphis music is mostly what I grew up listening to. Okay. So for your career's trajectory, like your career path, man, what do you see yourself developing? Where do you see yourself going? Uh, honestly, man, I see myself going to the stars, man. Uh, I've been doing it for a long time. I feel like I can bring a lot to the table. I bring versatility to the table. Uh, you know, I was saying about putting my soul into music early on. You know, everything I made was like a real song and stuff like that. But one of my friends, uh, his name is Matt B. He's actually in some of my songs. And he, uh, he had more of the clubbing type style. I was like, man, you know, I, I kind of morphed them styles in, into each other at first. I was uh, hesitant, but I was like, man, you know what? I can morph them into each other. I can still spit, spit some real stuff while I'm on a club song or whatever, you know. I can still sit there and, you know, have people nodding their head while it's still, you know, saying something that's that's tight, you know what I'm saying? So. Okay, so when it comes down to, like, your recording process, man, what are some of your techniques or what are some of the things that you look for before you actually get started with a new song? Uh, so me, like, sometimes I'll sit there and... You know, I'll be jamming out to they use some text and music. I start listening to the instruments they use because I do everything from scratch. So I literally make the beat and stuff like that. Sometimes I listen to the instruments that they're using. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll sit there and I'm just I'll just sit there on a blank slate and just start pressing some instruments just to see where it goes. You know, sometimes I go with the flow. But uh, you know, throughout the years I've taught myself to because back then you know I kind of just went with the flow and just saw how it went. Now I, I have more of an understanding of. You know how the keys work you know what instrument's gonna make this certain style and stuff like that so it just kind of depends on you know, how i'm feeling and styles and stuff like that if i got writer's block you know that's a good thing about making beats and stuff like that is that you can go you know you can start making beats if you're having a problem making pieces you go start writing music if you got a problem with that you can just start producing some of your stuff and stuff like that but i mean mostly to me writing and stuff is the easy part you know that's the that's the fun part mm -hmm. you know, all the grinding you know that's that's what that's the way i feel about it Okay, so right now we're on the subject of production. Who are some of your favorite producers? Uh, producers, man. Uh, let's see. Uh, Scott Storch is definitely 
one of the best. Uh, it, it all depends, you know, the style. Like Timberland, man, he had so many crazy different styles, did his own thing, you know, switched things up and stuff like that. And even, uh, you know, just... It's kind of hard to say it all, it's all on because a lot of producers, you know, have their own styles. I like Scott Storch because he had a, a variety, you know, somebody who could do an R&B type song and do a, uh, you know, do a crunk type song and different things and still morph into the game. And that's, that's kind of the way that I, I feel like I like doing things, you know, make different styles into it instead of everything sounding the same, you know. Nah, big facts. So with some of the, the newer artists and some of the newer musicians, like who are some of the new acts that you like and you enjoy listening to right now? Uh, so, well, I guess GT Garza is not too new, but that was, that's one that I like listening to. Uh, I started listening to, uh, I remember when Sea Struggles, it came out, you know, R.I.P. to him. Uh, you know, that was, that was definitely one person that I listened to, listened to his mixtapes all the way through. And, uh, you know, uh, let's see, who else can I think of? Uh, I like, I like Polo G, you know, Polo G sits there and he spits some real stuff in his tracks while making it crunk at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know? But... Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm more, I like listening to the lyrics and stuff, so sometimes, you know, I sit there and jamming out, but yeah, Polo G, he be, he be killing some tracks. Okay, so would you think of yourself more so as being a lyricist, more so than anything else when it comes down to your, your hip-hop and rapping style? Yeah, I would say uh, lyricist, like, I mean, you'll listen to it, and I mean, you know, people can feel it, and then, but again, you know, you still have to, like I said, when I learned from my friend, Lance Stone, you can still be pumped up and be a lyricist, you know, you can sit there and, uh, you know, you, you can get it crunk and stuff like that. You know, he's he's more of a hype man and stuff like that. But you know, it all it all depends. You know, these these extra styles kind of help. Like I have a friend who's a singer. You know, she brings a whole different element to the music. You know, and and that's one thing. Like a lot of times, I did things myself just because I, you know, I, I feel like that's why I said started messing up. I should have branched out more and uh, you know, having more people bringing their own elements and stuff like that it gives a whole different style uh, and i think i sent you one of the songs with one of my singers in it and she just she brings a whole different element to the game you know my homeboy matt he brings a whole different element he's more of a hype man you know mixing all these together it just it gives it a whole different kind of sound you know just mixing things together so. underground reggie this episode of underground reggie is brought to you by the ionmen.com Music, sports, and entertainment news from Iron Man Media. Follow the Iron Man on Instagram at ironman.media. Okay, so with the current state of music right now, what do you think about digital music and streaming? Uh, that's, that's just a whole different game now. Like, you know, that, that's one thing, you know, people used to sell mixtapes out the trunk, you know, I mean, that's the one thing I used to do back in school was sell my mixtapes. But, you know, uh, the game's changed now. It's all digital. So it's a whole different game, a whole different game to learn. You know, I actually just started getting into Instagram and stuff like that, which, you know, I should have been on that a long time ago, you know. But, uh, yeah, I was just focused on making some music instead of, you know, on the whole uh, distributing it by doing things like that. And, you know, that's definitely something that most, if any artist, you know, wants to come up, that's something they definitely need to know is, you know, just start working on your Instagram, your social media type stuff. I mean, honestly, it's a free way of uh showing your music out you know and, and it's uh you know people see it people listen to it people follow it i've had somewhere as soon as i made my instagram uh yeah, i had a big show out there in houston with hustle town network and uh they sat there and you know they, they promoted my stuff and stuff like that and i had my logo on my shirt i walked through traders village one day and somebody's like hey you're crispy i was like yeah you know he's like man i just saw the logo and he's like i recognize that logo and i was like so you know that social media game is a whole different game but it's i mean it works and uh you just gonna have to learn how to use it you know? and that's one thing i'm doing every day just trying to learn different ways to keep on marketing so what you think is more impactful for a musician in this day and age actually having a following online on social media or a presence in the streets um i think it's uh it's a little bit of both you know it all depends on your audience and like me, I'm mixing both, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing shows, but I mean, like I said, same way I met you, you know, I had to went out, you know, and met, I met you in person and stuff like that, but to get more followers and stuff, uh, maybe, you know, uh, the social media, I mean, you can reach, you can reach a larger audience without having to travel, that's the great thing, you know, like me, I've been traveling from Dallas to Houston, going to places, places, you know, huge events and stuff like that, and I've been getting followers and stuff, but yeah, that social media helps a lot, you know, you don't even have to get to the point of traveling, you just have to do that, and, learn that type of game so so with everything that's going on with the pandemic right now how as a musician and an artist have you been able to navigate these waters 
Yeah, so with that, uh, while during, especially during that time, you know, I think a lot of artists, they got to focus on their music more during that pandemic when they weren't able to do shows and stuff like that. So, you know, they just had to sit in the studio and write and stuff like that. And then they were able to do social media. That was a good thing was, uh, when you're talking about, you know, social media type stuff now, that that was a great thing because at that time you couldn't do shows. So you had to stream it and stuff like that instead. So it definitely brings it to move forward that way so uh yeah definitely that's one way luckily things started opening back up so i started going to shows again and stuff like that too so okay so what type of new music can we expect for crispy yola going into the future uh so i have a few features uh coming i have one with uh, my friend the oak cliff princess uh she's she's been doing it big out here in uh, dallas she's been uh actually even further i heard she told me she had a song on the radio in australia or something like that oh so, shit <laughs> yeah yeah so she's she's moving you know uh so i have a song with her um i have one with uh, again with gt guards i have one with big tuck that i haven't released yet uh we were talking about doing another one um and then I have uh, one with some uh, Cheddar Lope and I just have a whole lot more features going and stuff like that. Like, I mean, I have, again, I'd say hundreds of songs and thousands of beats that I haven't used. So now I'm starting to get more into the feature game and stuff like that. You know, I've uh, been grinding and stuff like that, working no extra shifts so I can start using more money to, you know, start putting my money into marketing and stuff like that. So uh, you just got to start seeing some more, just again, different styles of music. But uh, I'm always gonna st- still keep it true to myself, you know. So you're always gonna hear crispy, no matter what track you get. Okay, so you just touched on one thing as far as like definitely being able to grind like different positions and different roles as a musician. How important do you feel like that is as being an independent musician, being able to independently finance and fund your career? Uh, uh it's huge. Like that. That was one thing. So that was probably the biggest part of it so i had saved up for i can say i saved up for this moment right here i had saved up my last two income taxes so i can uh i knew i wanted when i came out i wanted to come out with a bang so you know i started you know shooting my music videos you know and if they haven't checked my music music videos man search chris viola on youtube and, and uh k-pack films shows my films and he's uh uh, we do some kind of crazy stuff there like each video has been a different style even the video as a whole has been a different style we've used projectors something called light form projector had one where it was a salsa hip-hop song so we had a salsa dancer in there uh you know had had your typical you know rap music video where there's graffiti art and stuff like that but yeah we just uh yeah doing that uh the financial stuff though is it, you know everything costs that's one thing that you, you have to start knowing and that's what they i'm learning you know because i to do shows when you're not known and stuff like that mm-hmm. you, have to, you have to pay to do shows you know and i didn't know that that's part of the game you know uh i've been to a few radio stations where they played my stuff you know for free they, they like the music and stuff like that but sometimes you know you have to go out there and you have to uh, you know uh use a little bit of money here and there but then you, you end up gaining uh, you know a whole lot more fans by doing so so sometimes it's just what you have to do so. okay so being out here in Dallas, who would you say would be some of your favorite Dallas musicians? Uh, for sure, it's, uh, I mean, I grew up listening to DSR, you know, Big Tuck was, was definitely one of my favorites, so I made a song with him, you know, I was, uh, that was great, you know, uh, and Mr. Pookie, Mr. Lucci, I mean, everybody listens to that, you know, once he got out of jail, oh man, he's been killing it since, and, uh, then uh, C. Stroys, I loved uh, C. Stroys, man, he spit some real stuff all the time, and, uh, yeah, our PC choice. Okay, so before we get ready to go, man, is there anything that you want the audience to know? Any other things that you want to say? Uh, yeah, just keep a lookout. Uh, just like again, search my Instagram, Chris Viola. It's at Chris Viola, C R I S P Y O L A. Uh, look at my music videos. I'm trying to drop one every two to three weeks. Uh, and I've been dropping a new beat on Instagram about once every two to three days. Uh, just me making beats. I, I was saying I was gonna do it every day, but sometimes I get distracted by making them, you know, I'm just focused on sitting here in the studio and I need to get more into uh, trying to record me. Yeah, I've put more content on my Instagram, but yeah, best ways is Instagram, YouTube. Uh, my music's on Spotify. I do have an EP out called uh, Bonafide. If y'all wanna check that out, that should be on Spotify and every other uh, large music platform, but yeah, I'm out here grinding China. Uh, just keep releasing new, new music, so I guess keep a look out. And like that, you already know what it is. It's your homie DJ Rico Banks. We got more new music coming up. Chris Biola, man, we thank you, man. We're looking forward to seeing big things from you in the future. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate y'all having me out here.
Man, I appreciate that. Thank you, man. Thanks for listening to another episode of Underground Reggie. Underground Reggie. I'm your host, Rico Banks. DJ Rico Banks. Make sure you follow the I Am In on Instagram at iamin.media. We'll be back for another episode soon. Stay tuned.